Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on learning HTML Canvas. I'm Shruti Kapoor and I'm excited to show you how to use HTML Canvas to create dynamic and interactive graphics and animations on your web page. In this video, we'll create a basic example of using Canvas and drawing shapes. We'll look at how to create a canvas, how to draw a shape, and how to animate the shape. First, let's talk about the basics of HTML Canvas. HTML Canvas is a powerful HTML element that allows you to create dynamic and interactive graphics directly within your web page. With Canvas, you can draw and animate shapes, lines, text, render images and videos using JavaScript. Now let's set up our Canvas. We'll create a Canvas with an ID of Canvas. You won't see anything rendered yet because we haven't added anything to the canvas and that's okay. To see that our canvas actually loaded, let's add a height and a width and then let's add a background color of black color. So we can do that by using background black. Now you'll see that the page actually shows a canvas. The canvas element acts as a container for your graphics. Once you've created the canvas element, you can use JavaScript to access it and begin drawing. We can get access to this canvas by using get element by ID. Now we'll get context. The context is actually what the drawing will be rendered onto. It provides us a drawing interface for working with the HTML canvas element. We can get the context by using getContext method of the canvas element, which returns a canvas rendering context 2D object. Now let's set up our canvas so that it takes up the whole width and height. In order to do that, we can set the canvas width and height to window inner width and window inner height. If you have weird padding or margin in your browser and you see this white space, it's probably because body has auto margin added. So now let's reset it by adding a margin zero to the body element. Now that our canvas is set up, we are ready to do some cool stuff. We're going to create a canvas so that anytime we click, we'll draw a circle. Our circle will have a predefined radius and we'll assign the color red. Now we need a specific method from the context, which is arc. So we need the arc method with an X and Y being the center of the circle. And then radius is the predefined radius that we want to give with the start angle of where we want to start. So for us, we'll start at zero. And then our end angle will be a full 360. So that is two times pi. And a counterclockwise, we'll set it to false because we don't care about the direction at this point. So the first thing we're going to do is add an event listener of click to our canvas. Let's define this function. And just to make sure that it's working well, we're going to open our console and make sure that when we click, we can actually get the event. Cool. So the first thing we want to do is begin our path. Then we'll set up our arc, provide our X and Y as a center, provide the radius, the start angle, the end angle, and the direction. Now to know where we want to draw X and Y, we need to know the radius, we need to know the center of the point. So that center will be where we have clicked. So that's going to be X coordinate of our event and the Y coordinate of our event. We'll set the radius to be anything, but right now let's give it 20. We'll provide a stroke style of red just to make sure that we can actually see the line. You'll see that we have an empty circle. If we don't want to make an empty circle and we want to fill it for the color, we can provide a fill style, we'll provide it here and fill it. And there you have it. We've created circles wherever we want. Now let's animate these circles. The first thing we're going to do is create an animate function and use request animation frame to animate using this function. 
Let's make sure our code is working by calling a console log. Looks like it's working. Now let's break down what happens in this animation. Whenever we click our mouse, we want to create a circle, which we're already doing. And then we want the circle to move. So how does that work? Remember that arc function takes a circle center, x and y, as its parameters? If we change the value of x and y really fast, it'll look like the circle is moving. And we can change it really fast because we have access to request animation frame. Let's try doing that. Now to change x and y really fast, we are going to provide it a dx and dy, the horizontal and vertical speed. And on every tick, we are going to increase the center of the arc x and y by dx and dy, making it look like our circle center is moving and hence our circle is moving. Let's refactor this a little bit. We'll set x and y outside in our click handler. We'll create a new function, handle drawing, which will be our click handler. We'll set our x and y in this function. We'll use this function to set up the parameters of our circle before drawing it. Looking good so far. OK, we're creating circles now. But we need our circles to move. For that, we just need to move the center of our circle by dx and dy in the animation function. So you see here, the circle is moving, and we're getting streaks. The reason we are getting streaks is because the previous circle is still on the canvas. So really, you're just seeing multiple circles on the canvas. We can fix that by clearing our context before drawing the circle. We can clear the context by context or clear rect. We just need to specify the extent of the rectangle we want to clear. Since we are clearing the entire canvas, our coordinates are going to be 0, 0, 2 windows inner width and inner height. Cool, we got circles now. They'll start whenever we click and move on to infinity and beyond. You'll notice that our circles are only moving in one direction, and they have a fixed speed and radius. Let's add some chaos. Let's give our circles a random speed and a random radius. Let's also make sure they don't go beyond the walls of our canvas. To do that, we'll need to ensure that before we draw our circle, we're still within the bounds of the canvas. That can be checked by looking at the center of the circle. If our center A is greater than the width of our window, which is our canvas width, then switch the direction. And same thing for B of the circle. OK, looking good. But now it goes out of bounds on the other side. So let's fix that by checking that A is less than 0, and same for B. Great, it stays in bounds. You'll notice that it kind of goes halfway and then switches direction. But we wanted to switch direction as soon as it touches the surface of the wall. So we can fix that by adding radius to the condition to ensure that the ball barely touches the surface of the wall before bouncing back. OK, that's looking good. And there we have it, a ball rolling on the screen. This can easily be extended to make fancy games. In the next part of this video series, I'm going to extend this program that we just created to create fireworks animations on the screen. Stay tuned for that. If you like this, please consider subscribing to support the channel. And now, here's a dev joke. <laughs>